give us your thoughts. Cyprus, is it a rising star in the region, presenting Cyprus's new economic strategy? Thank you very much. Um, good morning to all. If I may pick up from something that uh, Menelas has mentioned earlier, any uh, resolution to the Cyprus issue, with the resulting in the reunification of the island, will certainly be a boost on the economy. So, the, and the numbers I'm presenting here today are not factoring in uh, this, this potential which is there to be uh, exploited. Uh, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, the new government took office in March of this year with a clear mandate to pursue modernization and to build a resilient and prosperous economy for all its, its citizens. While acknowledging these challenges that lie ahead, the new administration is committed to creating an environment conducive to the objective of economic and social progress. The government's vision is to make Cyprus one of the best places in the world to live, work, and do business. What has come to be known as Vision 2035 is the new long-term strategy for the sustainable development of the Cypriot economy. The strategy consists of over 240 actions aligned with EU-driven initiatives such as a recovery and resilience plan. It encompasses structural reforms as well as initiatives aiming to enhance the value added of ex existing sectors and promote new ones. <coughs> Cyprus is the Eastern Mediterranean gateway into the EU, lying at the crossroads of major global markets. In fact, one of the key achievements of Cyprus' foreign policy in the past few years is the establishment of regional cooperation mechanisms together with Greece and other countries in the region, such as Egypt, Israel, Jordan, the UAE, Lebanon, and others. The cooperation covers a wide, a wide range of sectors, including energy, security, education, environment, climate change and innovation, promoting peace, stability, and prosperity in the region. Let us consider the economy today and its key trends. As can be seen from chart one, Cyprus su suffered a COVID-related contraction of 4.4%, one of the smallest in the EU, and in 2021 recorded a positive growth rate of 6.6%, almost double the EU average. Despite the adverse external environment of 2022, Cyprus, uh, Cyprus managed to grow by 5.6%, one of the strongest growth rates recorded among its peers. In the next few years, Cyprus is expected to grow at rates hovering around 3%. What is important to note is that Cyprus rebounded very quickly, as it did in earlier crises. Cyprus is a small, open economy and a very flexible one. A V-shaped recovery is the norm. Further diversification and agility are key to enhancing resilience. Chart 2 shows inflation. In 2022, inflation skyrocketed in line with the rest of Europe. Following the ECB interest rate hikes and the drop in energy prices, inflation is currently on a downward path decelerating to 3% as of May uh, 23, one of the lowest rates in the EU. Given the projected strength of GDP, as demonstrated earlier, this suggests that the economy is quite resilient at higher interest rates and responds well insofar as the objective of price stability is concerned. Moving on to public finances, as may be observed from chart three, Cyprus has been pursuing contractionary fiscal policies leading to budget surpluses, except of course during COVID-19. Further improvement of the public finances is expected in the years to come, with the fiscal position reaching a surplus throughout. Chart four depicts the evolution of the debt to GDP ratio. In 2022, 
The general government debt dropped to 86.5% of GDP, the second largest drop in the EU, and is expected to reach 60.1% by 2026. In view of what has been presented so far, it is of no surprise to witness a positive response by the rating agencies. The creditworthiness of the country is further supported by a resilient banking system capable of internal capital generation. As can be observed, the country has crossed over to investment grade ratings. Hopefully Moody's, which has a positive outlook, will follow with an upgrade soon. Its recent report named Cyprus a potential rising star. As we speak, the 10-year government bond trades at 170 basis points over bonds. It is perhaps worth mentioning that in April of this year, the government issued its first sustainable bond, a 1 billion 10-year bond, listed here on the LSE. <coughs> the structure of the economy and government policy. As may be observed, Cyprus is a service-based economy with the service sector itself being quite diversified. As stated at the outset, the government aims to promote an effective market economy, leading to the transition of existing sectors into more productive and attractive business propositions and to the development of new sectors. The emergence of new sectors has been an ongoing process during the last few years. The technology sector is a good example. Cyprus is establishing itself as a growing tech hub. According to the latest estimates, the contribution of ICT to GDP has reached 12%, exceeding that of more traditional sectors, such as tourism, which contributes 50%, 10, uh, 10 I'm sorry, of GDP. Cyprus tourism is itself developing into a higher value added industry. Tourist arrivals this year are expected to grow by 50% at a higher tourist per capita expenditure following successful push into higher profit margin countries. Key government policies may be viewed in terms of horizontal and sector specific initiatives. On green transition, the, the government has adopted the EU climate neutrality targets and intends to execute swiftly as planned. It is worth noting that 41% of the 1.2 billion RRF is allocated to green initiatives. As regards the digital path, Cyprus is currently ranked 20th in the EU on the DESI index. This is not satisfactory. The government aims to move faster by utilizing 23% of the RRF. Smart government aims to fully cater for the needs of the business sector in a digital manner. A digital services factory in the context of a Scrum Agile framework is well underway. Judicial reform aiming at the timely administration of justice is happening. This is a chronic problem and an obstacle to modern economic development. Reform is radical and specific targets for the elimination of backlog cases have been set in the RRF. Another important horizontal initiative is the tax reform. As the country transforms into the new economic model in the digital and green era, the government aims to modernize the tax system to enhance transparency, fairness, simplification, efficiency, and therefore competitiveness. This is expected to further strengthen Cyprus' position as an international business hub. Sector-specific policies and initiatives have been designed for the sectors presented on this slide. A number of these initiatives have economic-wide positive spillover effects. One example is the policy of addressing skill mismatches as the economy is transitioning. In concluding this presentation, I would like to touch upon the funding aspect of the growth plan by, by speaking in terms of debt and equity. Budget surpluses and the EU funds, such as the RRF and Thalia, provide the straight state-driven equity into the economy. 
Private investment, and primarily foreign direct investment, comprise the private sector's contribution to equity. FDI is currently achieving record growth rates in various sectors, as evidenced by numerous FDI trackers. Strong surplus liquidity in the banking system, as can be seen, uh, I'm referring to this uh, liquidity ratios of the banks, uh, is the source of debt. The dynamics of debt and equity are leading to a reduction of private debt to the GDP and thus to further strengthening of the economy. This trend is expected to continue. In a nutshell, Cyprus is growing and diversifying into a successful, broad-based economy backed by prudent finances and healthy economic indicators. The country is well on its way to achieving sustainable growth and fulfilling its vision and aspirations. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Patelides. Um, we have time for one, one or two questions, if anybody wants to ask them. Um, if not, uh, let me just ask one question of, of you, Mr. Patelides. Cyprus has had quite a problem with youth unemployment for, for many years. Do you have any thoughts on, on how much further you can go to improve youth employment? I mean, youth unemployment is still relatively high. Yes. Overall, employment is roughly 6%, but youth unemployment is, mu is much higher. Even though Cyprus is number three in the world in, terms of, in, the, in the EU, in terms of university uh, graduates per capita, uh, there is still a persistent problem with, unit, with youth uh, unemployment. This is mainly because of the transformation of the economy. The economy I mean, in the past was based on professional services, banking, and other industries, more traditional industries, which required you know, a high number of economists, accountants, lawyers, and so on. But the economy is moving into other directions as well health, education, I mentioned technology. So there is a lack of, for instance, uh, professionals in the technology sector. So there is lack of talent. Therefore, the government, what is trying to do is to address this skills mismatch issue. So there is a plan as to how we can deal with this matter uh, so as to be able to uh, alleviate or eliminate this problem and at the same time support the growth of the economy. Because the companies coming to, Cy to Cyprus, to set up an operation in Cyprus, are looking for talent. They need, they need you know, human resources to operate. And it's important that we are in a position to provide them with these uh, resources. I, I must say that I thought most of the numbers you presented, many other countries in the EU would be very envious of your your current situation, and I think this country might be quite envious too. Um, any last questions from anybody in the audience to, to Mr. Patsalidis? Uh, if not, uh, yes, yes, one question there at the back. Sorry, there's a microphone coming towards you. Hi. My name is Andreas. Uh, yeah, you said that uh, there's a, lot, a lack of uh, tech talent in Cyprus, but does this comes down to the universities? I mean, is there any plans? Are there any plans for like changing something at the universities to promote the tech industry? Uh, yes, I mean um, the the government is is planning to work with the universities and with the tech professionals uh, in the country and with the various research institutions uh, so as to come up with a scheme that uh, at the end of the day will enhance uh, and assist uh, young people who wish to uh, enter into the technology sector uh, and therefore be given more choice and at the same time be uh, in closer contact with the industry itself, so that the industry becomes also part of the uh, education process. 
so it, it's very important for the private sector, I'm meaning the industry, to cooperate with the, uh, with the authorities uh, in reference to the education sector so as to, to boost uh, the, the, you know, um, the, the technology sector and to achieve meaningful results as far as um, the content of education is concerned. Yes, one there, and then I with maybe the last question, actually. Peter, can I make a... Can we come the, with the microphone here? Like yes, please. Please. Briefly. <laughs> He's going to go to the... Yes. Um, good morning. I'm, the, I'm George Papanastasio. I'm the Minister of uh, Energy, Commerce and Industry. Um, I have been listening very carefully the positions of uh, Lord uh, Hani, also the, the uh, Mr. Patsalidis and uh, Mr. Menelao as well. So I was uh, a bit uh, keeping myself in the seat without uh, just uh, jumping in in order to make uh, certain comments. Um, I will agree with Lord Hani on certain things, but on others I will disagree. Um, Coming from the energy sector, I, I heard that the Turkish pipelines, they are closest to the solutions. This I disagree. What I will agree is that uh, the Cyprus problem is causing difficulties in seeing development in the country. Um, what we are trying as part of the energy solutions, we are creating an environment which the environment will uh, help the economy to develop by using energy. Certainly the neighboring countries, including Turkey, they will not be ignored. In order to give this development uh, through energy into the economy and boost it up. On the jobs, that uh, Mr. Pastalidis mentioned, I mean, and the talents that we are missing in Cyprus. Possibly, because I'm coming from the private sector, I will say that, by the way, coming from the private sector, meaning 27 years in BP and 12 years in VTOL, and suddenly I'm appointed as a Minister of Energy. So you understand that I was on the side of employing talents in uh, my previous career, previous life, and I can tell you that uh, there is lots of talents in Cyprus. However, we do not have the positions to put them in, in order to show their, uh, to, to, to utilize those assets, which they are called talents, and move, uh, pu push, give a push to the economy. As a result of that, we see these talents moving to other countries. And um, I can tell you that uh, many of the uh, the people that uh, they are talents in Cyprus, they leave Cyprus because we have not created the right environment in Cyprus in order to stay in Cyprus. And I'm sure there are many Cypriots and families that they, they are children, they are working in the UK and in, 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 uh, and in Europe generally. Uh, myself, I placed at least uh, uh, 20 people, Cypriots talents, in, uh, in, um, in jobs in Central Europe and they were all technical. So you understand that uh, Central Europe is missing technical jobs, and Cyprus has many technical people that they cannot find jobs in Cyprus. What we are trying to do in Cyprus now, through energy, is to create these job positions in order for these talents to stay in Cyprus and deliver in Cyprus. So when I will be presenting later on with uh, my friend uh, John Adriel from uh, ExxonMobil, I will uh, go through certain of uh, these uh, matters and uh, go in, uh, in detail of what we are trying to do through energy in order to give solutions possibly to the Cyprus problem, Lord Honey, um, use incentivizing the neighborhood in order to uh, see some prospect in bypassing the emotions that they have been long in the country and in the neighborhood for 50 years. This government is thinking differently Trust me, we will move on and do things differently. This is what I wanted to just say. 
And um, sorry for the intervention, Peter. I just wanted to, to, to step in uh, so that we do not uh, create a, a pessimist environment for those other people in the room that they are investors and they are thinking, seeing Cyprus as a potential investment place, that there is prospect, we agree, Lord Hani, that the Cyprus problem is causing a difficulty in moving fast. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think, I, I'm, I'm afraid we're out of time, but we'll, we'll take more questions when we move to the next, next panel. But thank you for, to the Minister for, for that comment. And thank you thank very you much, very much, Mr. Pasolini.